in the audio. We welcome, uh, we welcome uh, Sebastian uh, Almayer, uh, who uh, is based um, at the University of uh, Grenoble uh, Alpes uh, in France. And uh, we're going to see our talk on uh, MF2, which is a library to compute uh, refined mean field approximation, a joint work with Nicola Gaft. Okay. So, yeah, thank you very much and good morning. Um, I hope the audio is okay. Just check. Uh, it is, and we see the slides. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, my name is Sebastian Almayer. I am a PhD student under the supervision of Nicola Gast, and I will just shortly present you our recently developed uh, toolbox, the RMF tool, which, yeah, I repeat, but uh, it's a library to compute refined mean field approximations. So, what led us to, uh, to work on this toolbox is the question, on how we can efficiently analyze, understand, and optimize large scale stochastic systems. And one example of those stochastic systems would be, for example, the load, balan load balancing systems with uh, different policies. And naturally, we want to understand these systems and we want to apply different policies. And so we want to compare these policies and to evaluate them to see what works best. And yeah just see how they perform. So, but since these systems naturally are stochastic and quite hard to analyze, we need approximation methods and the mean field approximation is one of the techniques that can be used and help to simplify things and to understand uh, how these systems behave. And here our RMF tool comes into play. So what we want to do with this tool is we want to help uh, to facilitate the usage of the mean field approximation and also to, yes, support its usage, uh, yeah, facilitate its usage and to support its applicability. Okay, so just to give you some intuition about what the mean field approximation is about. Um, so the mean field approximation can, generally speaking, be applied if we have a system of interacting objects that could be, for example, servers. And these servers have some finite states. It basically could be their queue length up to a finite buffer size. And the problem with the stochastic process is that as soon as we have a large number of servers, we have an immense amount of states and it's get, it gets quite hard to analyze the system. But the mean field approximation can help since it's, uh, it's obtained by a limiting result of these systems. Uh, where the system size grows large and the dynamics can be reduced to some differential equation. So a deterministic process, which is then much easier to analyze and to study. So just a small roadmap of what I want to talk about in the next few minutes is first, I want to give you a short example where the mean field approximation can be applied and how we can then put it in our toolbox and work with it. And then I just want to go a bit deeper into the features of our toolbox. So the example I chose to present you is the power of two choice load balancing, load balancing model. Uh, it's a model where we have N servers here with all of the servers work at the same pace. They all can work through jobs uh, uniformly uh, with a uniform pace. And we have an arrival stream of jobs, which are, is scaled by the number of servers. So we call it here N and lambda is the arrival rate. And this system follows a policy, the power of two choice policy, meaning that the dispatcher chooses two servers at random and then forwards the job that arrived to the server, which has the low amount of jobs in its queue. Okay. So how do we do it? How do we put it in our toolbox? First, of course, we need some model representation. Here we can represent our model by just looking at the fraction of servers which have a certain amount of jobs in their queue. So from having no jobs up to the K jobs where K is the uh, buffer size of the servers. And then we get we have a few parameters in our model, so the number of servers, the server speed, the arrival rate, and our buffer size. And 
and this system admits two changes. So one change is the arrival of servers, the arrival transitions, and the other one is the removal of, of jobs from the queue when a server is done with a job and worked through it. And this suffices to just characterize the model and to put it in our toolbox and then to obtain meaningful approximation and simulations. So how do we do it? First, we just import a toolbox from the RMF tool. And then depending on how the model, rep how we represent the model, we choose a class. In this case, it's the density dependent population process, which uh, describes this, this um, system quite accurately. And we set the parameters, which we introduced before. And now, which, which we think makes a lot of sense is that we can just directly use the mathematical formulations and use them to specify the transitions in our model. So we just use the arrival and removal transitions as in the upper right corner and just write them down. And, and that's it. So we cycle through all the transitions we have and done. So the model is set up. So now on the next step, since we now have the model cal uh, initialized, we want to uh, calculate the meaningful approximation. Just what is the, the, the essential uh, intuition you need to have about meaningful approximation is, um, is that it describes the average variation of the system, system. So in this power of two choice model, it's basically it's the number of arrivals to the servers minus the removals. So if we want to calculate the mean for approximation, we just now set the initial state. So here we set all our states to have and all our servers to having zero jobs in the beginning. And then we can calculate the mean for approximation. So that's it. And then just to compare what our results, we then uh, also simulate two uh, sample trajectories, one with a system size of 50 and one with a system size of 1000 servers. And finally, we can plot these results. So here the dashed line is the mean for approximation and then the, the other lines correspond to the sample trajectories. And as uh, yeah, seen before from the intuition, the, as, so if the system size grows large, the mean for approximation captures the behavior quite closely. So that was an example. So now let me go a bit more into details because there's uh, unfortunately not enough time to talk about all the methods we include in our toolbox. So I would first would be very happy if you feel interested, uh, if you are interested in the general methodology and have a look in our paper. You can find a repository of the toolbox there and many more examples. And now I just want to briefly summarize about the, the models we included in our toolbox and which can be approximated and even more refined and advanced techniques. So first of all, what we can do with our tool, toolbox, as soon as we specify our model, we can uh, calculate the transient uh, behavior of the mean field approximation and simulate the trajectories, sample trajectories, um, but we also can obtain steady state results from these models and we include these, uh, these functions for homogeneous population models as seen before, like this uh, power of two choice model with uh, equal server rates or another example would be the epidemic spreading models or SST garbage collection models, other load balancing models with different uh, different policies, but we also in include heterogeneous population models. So this could be <clears throat> load balancing models where we have differing server speeds or we have heterogeneous epidemic spreading, spreading models or uh, a model where it naturally applies as uh, caching policies where all our contents in the cache has different popularities, for example. So these two classes, which are very rich on examples, can be included and then we even go a step further because mean field approximation uh, can be like the accuracy can be increased if we're interested in the mean behavior of our stochastic system. And there, Nicola developed a couple of years ago uh, this refined mean field approximation, uh, which is 
numerically a bit more advanced, but can be obtained as easily as the mean for approximation and is very or can is very important if we have system sizes which are between like 10 and 200 uh, items. And our toolbox supports these result, the, the, the uses of this mean field, uh, refined mean for approximation too. So this already brings me to the end of uh, my presentation. So thank you for listening. Um, I hope my yeah the the presentation teased you a little bit to look more into the refined mean field tool and to maybe get used to the mean field approximation and eventually if you're interested in it look into our recent results on heterogeneous systems and the theoretical accuracy bounds which we obtained and also some other work from Nicola which is quite interesting if you are uh, yeah, interested in large scale stochastic systems. So thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sebastian, for the nice uh, presentation. It's very good to see that the methods uh, uh, on refine mean field approximation are made uh, accessible. Uh, in case uh, the audience doesn't know, this method was also a best paper award, the SIG metrics, uh, a few years uh, back. We have time uh, for, for questions. Uh, please uh, type them in the chat or, um, or, or just unmute. Anyone? Sorry, um, Giuliano, there is a question in Slack. I don't know if you. you unfortunately, want to... I don't have access to Slack. So if you maybe. Yes, uh, um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, a comment. Thanks for the great presentation. Uh, and the question was uh, uh, I, I'm not an expert in, uh, of the mean field approximation. Uh, I'm just curious about the fact that uh, um, uh, here we have. Uh, processes that uh, interact one with uh, another. And, uh, and my question was, uh, if it is possible to apply the mean field approximation also in the case where processes uh, interact in a more complex way, say an example of a, a queue that can uh, put uh, items on more than uh, one other queue or something like this. So is it, is it so possible? Uh, in general, yes. I mean, it definitely depends then on the, on the yeah, of the, of the on the design of the system. So, like many models are supported, and in general, we have some weak. Con uh, yeah, we impose some. For example, if you have the drift on the mean field approximation, uh, we it has to have some. For example, Lipschitz continuity and and these things. So, in general, I would say yes, but. There are some scaling assumptions we have to make. So, it's just generally speaking, or in, in what I want to say is, without really looking at the model, it's hard to say. But uh, I'm always quite surprised how many models are then supported by mean field approximation or some variations of the mean field approximation. So. When in doubt, I would always recommend just have a look at it, write down the model, just uh, maybe look at the papers in the beginning as always. The, the, the things that are needed are stated quite clearly. And then mean field approximation can probably be used to obtain at least some limiting results, yes. So thank you very much. <laughs>